Barcelona's defense is in safe hands. The way that Xavi Hernandez has been building Barcelona's defense has been extraordinary. Like really think about it, right? Because three years ago, when Barcelona had to face against PSG, where they lost 4-1, we did assemble a defense that had Dest, Pique, Lenglet, and Jordi Alba. Like bro, who in the hell even thought about something like that? Like our options behind that defense was also a disabled Umtiti, Minguesa, and then Firpo. Now, it's funny because Firpo's only really good game was actually against PSG, where he actually made Maintained, killing Mbappe, but overall, this defense and our options was just so weak and we were so stagnant because it was also a team that could not improve on top of what they were already doing. So we were literally considered at that time as a mid-table team. And so it was embarrassing. And if you look at the goals conceded over the years, in the past seven years, you can see that Barcelona's goals conceded rate was stagnant for about four to five years from 2017 all the way until 2021. There was no real improvement. Movement. And then we went on to 2022, and that was the season where Xavi Hernandez had his first full season with Barcelona, and defensively, we were amazing. Now, right after that, once we got into 2023 and 2024, you can see that our goals conceded did skyrocket a little from the previous season. But that was because we did have an injury crisis going on, our team was still very young, we were very early in the process of Xavi Hernandez's sporting project, and I would even say and argue that within the time of October 2023, all the way until January 2024, it was a fluke. It was a complete fluke. It did not define what Xavi Hernandez's team really was, and especially defensively. And now today, we can safely say that Barcelona are going back to their previous form, the form that we saw last season. If you look at the previous seven games that Barcelona played, you can see that we played against Las Palmas, Atletico Madrid, Napoli, Mallorca, Atletico Club, Getafe, and again Napoli, which was the first leg. So we went all the way back until February 21st, and within those seven games, Barcelona only conceded two goals. Only two goals were, were allowed and we are currently averaging a total of 0.2 goals per 90 minutes. That's very impressive. Just to give you guys context, so you guys can understand what this actually means. It basically takes right now Barcelona five games to concede one goal. Every five games, our defense only allows one goal to go up against them. Now, if you guys do not think that this is an improvement from what we were two or three months ago, let's go back into the phase where Barcelona were atrocious, right? We were just so ugly, so bad that we couldn't even defend our own lives if we had to. Here is going to be a little small sample between January 7th and January 27th. This is going to consist of, again, seven matches. And within these seven games, Barcelona allowed 18 goals. Can you guys believe that? Because remember what I just said a few seconds ago. In the past seven games from today, we only allowed two goals. Back on January, when we get a small sample of seven games, we allowed 18 goals. So six times more than what we allowed today. And on average, Barcelona were considered conceding 2.6 goals per 90 minutes. And it really does make you question just how Barcelona were able to manage such a change. The team that we saw in January is a completely different team to the team that we see today. We are just much more solid. We're actually so good that we are even positioned to say that maybe there is, yes, a great chance that we can stop PSG in the Champions League quarterfinals and potentially go into the semifinals for the first time since 2019. With this young of a team, part of the reason why I do think that Barcelona have improved defensively is because of their intensity. I remember back in Barcelona's 3-0 win against Atletico Madrid on March 17th, Lewandowski right after that game did say that the reason why we have improved is because during the training sessions, we are training with much more intensity. Another reason why is because I think that Xavi Hernandez really got his game management 100% correct, meaning that he is now using Kubarsi as a brand new center back in the defensive line. And also he gave a new role to Andreas Christensen. And so for Xavi Hernandez to have the balls to trust a 16 year old to 17 year old center back at this moment of the season it's just insane and it's working out amazing because i would even say that the defensive line that we carry today has much more flavor more character more dominance with kubarsi cancelo Araujo, and kunde in the back christensen looks very comfortable also when he is playing right next to either frankie de Jong or gundogan and it's so fun to see every time barcelona do get pressed from any opponent because they deal with it very easy especially with kubarsi at the back like every time he does get pressed you're always just waiting to see what he's going to do next because you just know that he is going to be making the right decision and find the right man. His passing is just so precise and he is just so composed. It's really entertaining. So even if you guys are watching this, right, and you guys are not Barcelona fans, I highly do recommend you guys to watch Barcelona games because to be honest, one of the most entertaining sections within Barcelona's games is on the defense and how well they do pass the ball left and right, back and forward. I would even recommend to look up the buildup that Barcelona made when Rafinha did score that goal that was ruled off against Las Palmas 
Almas. The buildup behind that goal was just so amazing. I'm like, this is Xavi ball. This is how Barcelona should be playing because Barcelona were being pressed. We should have lost the ball. If this press was going against us two or three months ago, we would have lost the ball. We probably would have conceded, but Barcelona are getting much better. Here are going to be a couple of examples on how Barcelona are now in terms of their passing network and their heat map. As you can see in the past three to four games, there's a lot of triangles being made with the defenders, the midfielders. A lot of passes are going between the midfielders and the defenders and between center backs and fullbacks. Everything looks very healthy. The shapes are everywhere and there is a perfect balance. In comparison, if you look at the samples of how Barcelona played in terms of their passing network two or three months ago, here are going to be some examples on Girona, Villarreal, and Real Madrid where Barcelona did lose. You can see that it did not look really healthy. There was not a lot of passes going on between them. The defense was not even participating a lot, which was already a huge concern. And then you can see that in this game against Villarreal, right? You can see that there is a lot of passes going on, but there's not a lot of triangles. And we looked very, very flat. There was not a lot of activity going on in the attacking areas. And even in the passing network of the match against Real Madrid, you can see that there was a lot of passes going on between Golugan. And I believe that is Christensen. But with everybody else, like there was nothing going on on the right side, nothing going on between the fullbacks and the center backs, just nothing. It was flat. And so like I've said, Barcelona have really improved. And that team that we saw three years ago, not one of those players are here today at Barcelona. We have done a complete cleanup and we have been rejuvenated. And there are players on the rise. Like for example, Mikael Faye. Everybody has been calling Faye as the reincarnation of Ronald Koeman, a Barcelona legend that played with the club in the 90s. Mikael Faye has been known for his shooting skills. It is immense. There are speculations though that he might leave Barcelona because there is a lot of clubs that do want Mikael Faye because they know that he is a monster. He knows how to score goals. He knows how to defend. He is a great aerial duel monster and teams like United, Bayern Munich, Juventus, Girona have all asked Barcelona on what it takes to sign Mikael Faye. But it says here according to Tony Juan Marty that Barcelona are clear. Faye will be part of the first team's preseason and the squad for the US tour this summer. From the player's side, Faye is prioritizing continuing to wear the Barcelona colors despite there being lucrative options economically. Succeeding at Barcelona is Faye's only goal. And that is what's going to lead us towards our next topic is what is going to be Barcelona's defense for next season and what is going to be Barcelona's backup options because I do think that Xavi Hernandez is in a great position to make his defense even stronger than it ever was before. And the first player that I do want to talk about before I even talk about anybody else, it is Mikael Faye because I do think that he deserves to go to the first team next season. I do believe that he will get his debut in this current season and the fact that he's able to score goals, pass well, categorize himself as a aerial duel monster, he needs to be at Barcelona because there is no other center back right now that can do what Faye does. And I hope that he does stay because look, he's 19 years old, okay? He's a soccer player. And because you are a soccer player, you're also human, obviously. And when you're human, you have feelings, you have opinions, you have determination to succeed and really make a name for yourself out there in the football world. The reason why I do say that I hope Faye does accept to continue at Barcelona for the next seven to eight years, if not even more, is because I hope that he does not compare himself to someone like Kubarsi and say, hey, look, Xavi Hernandez, why is Kubarsi at 17 years old starting in the back line and I'm over here 20 years old and I can't even get a starting position because let me tell you, Faye is going to go into the next season as a backup option. I don't necessarily see him as a starter yet, even though I think that there is that chance that he might surprise the world, right? And become the best defender in the world, maybe at 20 years old, you never know. But to be more realistic, most likely he's going to be a backup option. And, and I hope that he does accept that role because I don't want him to say, right, that, you know, he's 20 years old and that he should be getting a starter role at the phase of his career because he's comparing himself to Kubarsi, who's making a name for himself at 17. Because let me tell you, I know, I freaking know that Faye knows he's good. He knows that he is a talented defender and he may want to consider a team like Bayern Munich or Manchester United, two teams that will give Faye two things that Barcelona cannot really give him at the moment. And that is guaranteed minutes as a starter and to double his pay. That is the thing that does scare me the most because in my opinion, Barcelona have to do everything they can to continue with Faye. And I hope that Faye really does say that he is only interested in representing FC Barcelona because let me tell you, Faye is not a Barcelona Academy product or a player. Like he has only been with us for one year, only one season. So he does not really have to say that I have been loving Barcelona for all my life. Like no, he literally joined us one year ago. He's not considered a Barcelona Academy player at all. And the reason why also I would even tell like Faye, right? Why he should not compare himself to Kubarsi is because Kubarsi was actually somebody that has been at Barcelona for the past 10 years. He has been at the club since like he was eight years old, nine years old, which is why he can be a starter at 17. With Faye is different. He has only been at Barcelona for one year. So I would not even compare Faye's progression with Kubarsi. It's just two different stories. Faye will need to be a little bit more 
patient. And I do think that by the time the next season is over, so the summer of 2025, that is what we can safely say, okay, can Faye be a starter in the back line? Now, again, I just don't know how his progression is going to be. We might go into the preseason and he might perform as the best center back in the world. We never know. But Faye, in the reality that he is in, knowing that he has to compete against Arujo, Kunde, Kirchensen, Kubarsi, understand that he will be a backup option. And sometimes here and there, he'll get the starting minutes. Moving on towards the next player that I do want to keep, and that is Kunde. I think that Kunde, for sure, if anything, needs to renew with Barcelona for another four years. Him playing as a right back is amazing and makes him the best right back in the world. Now, let me tell you guys, Kunde, about eight months ago, or nine months ago, I believe, privately told Xavi Hernandez that he wants to go back into the center back position because in the previous season, he was playing as a right back. And through the summer, he was saying, hey, Xavi, like, I, I know that I did play as a right back through my first season with you, but I just want to go back to the center back position because I simply just enjoy it more. He even said, and I quote, it is my favorite position and the one I like to play in. Xavi knows that. I will never refuse to play at fullback. I don't look bad there. But in my formative years, I've always been a center back and I think it's the position in which I have more confidence in. And so I remember when Kunde said that, I'm like, okay, like maybe this could be a problem, maybe not. And then a couple of weeks later, we brought in Cancelo. Kunde was happy at that time. And we're like, oh my God, okay, like the problem is fixed. We're just going to be having Cancelo, Kunde, Arujo, and Balde, right? Our fullbacks will be Cancelo and Balde. But then we got into this season and we started using Cancelo as a right back and Balde as a left back. And what we noticed was that while yes, Cancelo and Balde were giving a lot in the attack, it made Barcelona's defense so vulnerable. It was not even funny. Like we were conceding so many goals with Balde and Cancelo at the back and we just looked very shaky, which is why Xavi Hernandez was like, okay, like it looked good on paper, but in reality, it is not working. And then I remember when Koundé also played as a center back against Real Madrid back in January during the Spanish Super Cup final and Koundé did not have a good game at all. He was being humiliated by Real Madrid as a center back. And I think that those two things is what finally allowed for Xavi Hernandez to say, hey, look, I gave you a chance. I gave Kunde a chance to play as a center back, but it just did not work. It's not helping the collective team and our overall results. We have to put Kunde back into the right back position because it just makes Barcelona stronger. And that is the only correct decision because now, like I've said, in the past four to five matches, Kunde has been playing like a monster, a freaking monster. I would even say that this guy has the capability to take on someone like Kylian Mbappe because of the form that he is in. He really does understand the right back role. So for me, he is a starter and he should be continuing with us next season. Moving on towards the next center back and that is Arujo. Now, not really much to say. Arujo for sure obviously is going to be staying with us. He is the captain. He is a leader. He's a 1v1 ground duel monster. He is the fastest center back that Barcelona have and it's really hard to find a fast center back these days. I think that if Arujo really wanted to, he can test someone like Kylian Mbappe, Vinicius or Alfonso Davis on a 1v1 battle because Arujo is just that damn fast. So for me, you know, nothing more to say. Arujo is going to be continuing with us, and I know that he wants that too. So for me, he is in the starting 11. Kubarsi is going to be the next one. Kubarsi is going to be another starter for us as a left center back and being paired with Arujo. I think that Kubarsi never loses confidence. He uplifts other players, if anything. He's very composed. He always finds solutions at the back. He's very entertaining every time he does get pressed. You know, like I'm always like, oh my God, like he's getting pressed. Let's see what he does next. And then boom, he puts Barcelona in a position to attack into the final third, just out of nowhere, off, off of one pass. It's amazing. And so since February 3rd against Alaves, Kubarsi has been playing in every opening match, which was against Granada, Celta, Getafe, Athletic Club, Mallorca, Atlético Madrid, and Las Palmas. Xavi really does trust Kubarsi. And in the match against Las Palmas, the defender did play 90 minutes, and he was the second Barcelona player to recover the most balls with a total of seven. He was only behind Jules Kunde. Moving on towards the next few options, and that is going to be Andreas Christensen. Christensen, for me, should not be sold this summer. I know that it is an easy sell because even if we sell him for one million, it is still a profit for Barcelona because we brought in Christensen for free, but his versatility is what's going to keep Christensen at Barcelona. He can play as a CDM. He can play as a center back when, let's just say, for example, next season, our new CDM gets injured. You place Christensen there. We need him for depth. If Frankie gets injured, then pair whoever that new CDM is with Christensen and you'll be fine. And you keep Gundogan as a number eight or Pedri as a number eight. Christensen is your answer. If Araujo gets injured, that's fine. Move Kubarsi as a right center back in Araujo's position and then have Christensen as a left center back to be paired with Kubarsi. And then you can have five floating in with either Cancelo or Christensen. So overall, it makes Barcelona much healthier to keep Andres Christensen. He really does deserve it. Moving on towards the next one, and that is Cancelo. Cancelo for me is a starter right next to Kubarsi, Arujo, and Kunde. Cancelo, I would say, is over Alejandro Balde. I would assume that Barcelona find a solution for Cancelo to have continuity to go for either a permanent transfer or a loan. I know that Cancelo loves FC Barcelona. Every time I do see Cancelo score, he screams and he goes to the fans and he kisses the badge and we're like, oh my God, like this is a Barcelona player. His passion for the game and his passion
passion as a player can really be seen. He has been going through so many life difficulties, like outside of the pitch and outside of the game. I'm not going to really like talk about that in this video, but he brings that anger and that passion to the pitch and you, and you can just really see it. Cancelo is also a great passer and a great crosser. He can see through passes that we cannot see and Cancelo is able to achieve those through passes because he is so good at curling the ball with his outside foot. So his best football is yet to come and for me, Cancelo is a starter. Now moving on towards the last two options and that is going to be Alejandro Balde and Hector Ford. Hector Ford can play as a right back or as a left back. Balde can also do the exact same thing, preferably as a left back. It's healthy for us to keep these two players because they're both really young. They are academy players and I believe that their best is still yet to come. Hector Ford for sure will stay with us because a couple of weeks ago, Barcelona rejected an offer for 35 million euros. The only thing that Laporta and Deco want to do with Hector Ford is to renew the contract of the player for many more years. I think that part of the reason why they rejected 35 million euros, which could have been beneficial financially for the club, is because Xavi Hernandez says you should not let go of the player. Hector Ford is a real one. He is somebody who can give a lot in the fullback's position and do not sell him. Let's remember that Hector Ford had to start against Atletico Madrid, where Barcelona won 3-0, and Ford played amazing. He was able to really defend players like Molina, Llorente, and even Morata, surprisingly. And so in the end, this is going to be my starting back line. Kunde, Arujo, Kubarsi, and Cancelo for next season. Our options is going to be Hector Ford, Mikael Faye, Christensen, and Alejandro Balde. Notice how these four options can reinforce every position in our current back line. Balde can go in for Cancelo, Christensen can go in for Kubarsi, Faye can go in for Arujo, and Hector Ford can go for either Kunde or Cancelo. And so that is it. That is going to be wrapping up today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one.